evening. I would like to call to order the Thursday, April 1st, no fooling planning board meeting for the town of Berwick. If you would all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. I would like to introduce the board members tonight, live and in person. We have Allison Hurley to my left, um, Mike LaRue, our vice chair. We've got Phil Roy at home. Um, We've got Jerry Graybill, Amber Fecto, no relation to Nicole Fecto, and Paul Amatucci looking professional as always. Thank you. And we have Jen McCabe is there at home. She is our code enforcement officer extraordinaire. And then we also have James Bellissimo that has some title that I can't remember, but it has to do with town planning. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to open up our first public comment session uh, to anybody that is a resident or a property member in the town of Berwick. I don't, do we have anybody in the waiting room? Nope. All right. Closing the public comment session, moving on to the approval of minutes for the March 18th, 2021 meeting. They were pretty brief minutes. Did anybody find any issue or did James do a good job this time? That's three in a row. Good job. That is three in a row. <laughs> Paul, did you find anything? I found nothing. No, wow. it looked good. Gary? No, I didn't find anything either. Looks good. Well then, well, then they must be perfect. So I need a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the planning board minutes. All right, we have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. All right, we have a second. All in favor? Raise your hand. Aye. All right, that looks like it was fully approved. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to new business. We have a conditional use amendment and site plan review for the adult use marijuana production facility at 569 Portland Street, which is formerly known as Straight Fire Farms, is now known as Easygoing LLC. James? Good evening, everyone. <laughs> on February 20th, 2020, Straight Fire Farms, now Easygoing LLC, was granted a conditional use approval for an adult use production facility. The definition of adult use production includes both cultivation and processing. At that time, only cultivation was included as part of the application. The applicant is now requesting to add a manufacturing facility. This is considered an amendment to an existing conditional use approval. Therefore, the cap would not limit this application. The proposed 520 square feet will be in addition to the 2,945 square feet constructed earlier this year. And as a result, this application falls under site plan review. The lot uh, in total is 10.3 acres. The hours of operation are proposed to be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And there will be an estimated 10 employees associated with the expansion. So there are existing non-conforming lighting issues on the site. The light fixtures on the building have been there pretty much since the beginning of the building. And uh, this, some stadium lights were installed a few years ago. I just included section 7.4 for reference. There are several waivers requested as part of this application. Scale of <coughs> one inch to 40 feet, building elevation, topography, soils report from the applicant. They mentioned that the site is effectively flat and has already been developed with existing structures. Um, and then lastly, copies of letters to department heads knowing, notifying them of development. Mm -hmm. I had some out, outstanding questions for the applicant. How is the waste being stored? What kind of waste is there from the process? How will it be transported to the transfer station? Where will the 10 employees park in relation to the existing approved uses? I think the parking plan probably should be updated. What is the status of the approved rain garden? And what is the status of the septic system? And has the septic system been relocated? And for the planning board, questions for you. How should the lighting be addressed? I'm sure you guys will want to know details on the extraction process and the uh, safety precautions. 
Uh, then I think you can get right into the discussion on uh, application completeness. That's all I got. Great. So um, I'm assuming this is the applicant, or who, who will be speaking for the applicant today that wants to? Uh... All right, Evan. Hi, how's it going, guys? So I think certainly some of those things I can address uh, when it comes to more of the detail of the processes themselves. Um, I would say the client, uh, the, the owner, the tenant of the building would probably be better suited to address those. But anything related to the site development, I could probably cover. Um, Is there a list we can go through point by point, or how would what would be the best way to go about that? Oh, so, <clears throat> this meeting is for application completedness. So, mm. first and foremost on the board, we need to look at the application, which I have sitting in front of me right now, and it doesn't look complete to me. So, the first thing um, that we'll just kind of put aside is that we can't vote on this because I don't have a complete application in front of me. So the next time you come back, you're going to want, James can show you what you're going to, what you're going to need, but it's the whole first part of that application right there. I'm looking at it. There's no boxes checked off. I don't have the materials in front of me. So we need that for sure. Um, but we can ask questions and kind of get you rolling, right, for the rest of it, James, or should we just not do anything until we get application complete? No, I, think, I, think, I think now is a good opportunity to get everything out on the table and... Yeah, okay, I think so too. Yeah, so, Absolutely. oh yeah, the lights, that's no go. <laughs> no, so I, well, if you're going to talk, just come up to the podium um, so that you're on the mic and just state your name and. Uh... My name is Harvey Paul. Um, I just want to speak about the light part of it. Okay. Um, you know, we're the furthest most point from the town. Mm -hmm. The lighting that's there has been there for years. The lighting on the building has been there pushing 30 years, 24 or 5 years. The stadium light is not in Berwick. That's in North Berwick. Okay. Now, according to my lawyer, Berwick has not a lot of say about that light. Okay. <laughs> now, take that out of the picture. <clears throat> my issue with it is, being the furthest most point from the town, I'm friends with the local police. They come there once a night, maybe twice a night. We have all kinds of issues with security. Currently, I think, I'm certain some of you have heard about the catalytic converters being stolen from vehicles. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a terrible thing. I got 100 vehicles out there. So, you know, I, I talked to James about he's doing his job. Yeah. Love James. Does a great job. But this particular lighting deal, where we are with what's at stake, especially with more businesses going in there, you know, I told him that this should be exempt, waived. I don't know the proper term for that particular part of this. Right. But where we are, without a guarantee, the police can be there six times a night, which is, I mean, that's crazy to even ask. However, security is a huge issue. And with the stuff at hand, like I said, and you know, th this Cadillac converter thing is huge. I mean, and, and especially in my case, with the amount of vehicles that are there, the lighting is, is, is it's important. <clears throat> I 100% agree with you. So. There's no waiver for lighting. That's a town ordinance. Y you have to obey the town ordinances. So we have many, how many marijuana facilities do we have? I mean, marijuana is a huge security issue. I understand. Mm -hmm. We have lots of them. They're all obeying the, the lighting ordinance. I get it. And it's not about the light going down. It's about the light that goes up in the sky. It's a dark sky compliant and no glare on the road, like for vehicle I driving. That. I understand your setback, so maybe they're not getting glare, but it's still it's required. It's required of everybody. And that's not, so we don't have the power to waive that. And probably Jenny could speak to that. Jen, you're better versed in this than I am. Maybe she's not listening. <laughs> well, you know, on, I mean, on the same notion, though. I'm listening, but hold on one second. I just have Ruthie. Oh, yeah. Okay. You mentioned the light itself is in North Berwick. I'm sorry, guys. What was the question? The light is yes. Um, it's so they're they're asking about getting waivers for the the 
lighting, our lighting ordinance. And that's not something that we have the ability to waive. So just well, kind of because that light does fall on the North Fork line, that's something that we're going to have to discuss with our town attorney, Phil, and we can, we can, I can let you know what he thinks about it. Yeah. Sure. And, and besides, like, me. aside from that particular light, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get into town line disputes over a light, but the rest of the lights that are in Berwick do have to fall under our ordinance. That's correct. And, they do. When, when was that ordinance established? Um, well, the town people voted on it, so we all voted on it. When but, was this but, I mean, lighting what, one? Was it recent? Is what I'm saying? Um, no, no. I think about a few it's years. Been ago. Years. It's been years. All we're talking about here is a shield that goes on top of the light that's like 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yep. That's it. I get it, yeah. but it's not really the point. The point is those lights have been there 25 Probably years. Yep. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, right. I mean, but at what point? And yeah, right. where's the word it, grandfather come in? And where's the, I mean, Not, you not know, when you're coming in with a conditional a use new, permit yeah, to, to, to do I, a medical marijuana. I get, it, I get it, but I just want you guys to be aware oh, yeah. that, because yep. as far as I'm concerned, you know, tell me the police are going to be there six times a night, nope. and, I, and I ain't got no concerns. Yeah. But the way it is, the lights are, I mean, as far as security goes, it's an issue. I understand. You and can add more lights too. You can have more lights. Yeah. It's not a matter. It's just, it's a matter of it going to the road. You can and beyond have, your property line. And beyond the property line. That's, mm -hmm. that's basically it. You can have all the lights in the world facing towards you. It's going out. That's the issue. That's why we want the blinds on. And, and I mean, and security is, if you're having that much of a security issue with catalytic converters, then we have to pay extra attention to security with a medical marijuana facility that you have operating. I, I would here. hope. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so know, I'm just I mean, saying I, that. No. So I just, we want like it I said, to be. I, it's not like I, we're I, saying I, get rid of your lights. We're just saying yeah, try and. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not. It's not the, secu the security right. part. We want of it, it to be it's, secure. <laughs> it, it's, it's just the idea. The lights are a major piece of it. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and and to dim the lights or change the lights or and and again, yeah. I, you know, I, I just think it really needs to be looked at. Because I, you I know understand what, though? You're downtown, you know, I see where it fits. We're in the Wild West. I mean. No, I, I understand. Jen, since you're the one that has to enforce well, this. Here's the thing. So your building's in Berwick and your conditional use is in Berwick. So you will probably need to um, go by our ordinance for that lighting. So on your property, of course. But yeah, we. I think we can, um, I'm reading the ordinance. We can definitely enforce that even if it's a North Berwick light right now. Um, I will check with Phil, but you will have to comply by our ordinance for that light. Yeah. <clears throat> and that will be, that'll be a condition of your approval. Uh, that'll be a condition of your certi certificate of occupancy so that you can operate the business. That's we have correct. To make sure, we have to make sure everybody's, um, we had the same problem out on, with what's his name, yeah, out on School be, Street. Oh my God. And I mean, we can argue all day about it. You can say this, we can say this, but in the end, this is the ordinance. The town voted on it. It is what it is. You want to sell mar medical marijuana? This is what we have to do. With all use. Whatever it is. Marijuana. Whatever it is. I don't care what it are is. You, are you guys considering, I mean, you, you mentioned, you have you had catalytic converter thefts at your... Everybody so? around me has, but I have not. Okay. Oh, that's good. So your lights are effective, but... No, well, that's kind of the point. Yeah, right? yeah. It's yeah. Like I, got a system, I got a system that works. Yep, yep. Uh, the guy down the street lost a $2,000 catalytic converter off my truck right out in front of his place. Yeah. I have the best security. I mean, I, I've got motorcycles in my shop that are worth, you know, they're, they're six figures a piece. I mean, in a lot of them. And so, you know, security, I have huge security. But it's not so much about security when you when you're dealing with the external stuff. Absolutely. You know, and, 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 and that I, bad? It, you know, it, it just doesn't it's it's a shame. Is that bad? Uh, oh yeah. Oh, just come up yeah. if you're gonna talk, oh, yeah. you need to come up Sorry. to the podium. No, I'm, I'm done. But we're done with the lights now. I'm done. I just, okay, I just, so I just um think it's a sad thing. So when you come back with the updated and complete application, we're going to wanna see so I see the drawing of the building. I'm gonna, we're gonna wanna see the light plan. So the lights that are on the building, the lights locations, um, and the lights on the new proposed building. Um, an updated parking plan in that application. Although you would like to uh, you're, um, waive the site plan scale, which is, I'm actually on board with waiving that. I, we need bigger, like, we, I can't read this. And I have really good eyesight, and I can't read the details of it, and it's just the details are really important. So do you want to, is somebody making note of this, James? <laughs> um, a larger size of plans. And I don't, it doesn't have to be the hugest yeah. size, but I need more than this. I can't read it. Um, 
and the written statement that's on the sidebar needs to be on a separate sheet of paper so that we can read that as well. The type is too small for us. Yeah, so those are just those things really quick. Um, Jen, can you, oh, I don't want to bother you if you've got babies, Jenny, but um, can you, oh, sorry, okay, don't worry about it. I'll come back to you. Um, so let's go back to the questions then. How is the waste being stored? What kind of waste is there? And how will it be transported to the transfer station? Evan? If the client could chime in on that, I think I'd, that would be best. From the, from the extraction process? Okay, that's an, uh, they're, they're deflecting to you, Evan. So we need to know what kind of waste um, is, is generated during the extraction process. Where is it gonna be stored? How is it going to be stored? And then how will it be transported to the transfer station or wherever it is that you get rid of it? Sure. Um, we have a fire protection report that's written up that describes the general extraction process and does provide some explanation of the waste aspect. Uh, that would be the best thing to refer to for that. Um, I know I did put that to James. I'm not sure if that is in front of you all or if it that is not. Made it you. Okay. So maybe with that application, when you guys come back, the next time you come back, we have uh, or do you do you have something you can tell us? Well, I'm just I'm trying to figure out what we're talking about as far as waste. Like, um, I mean, it's a gas that gets continuously. Well, you also reused. have flour material that yeah. People so come the in, flour material will go dispose. That'll that'll be that, through the trash service. Okay. Um, and that's, that would. That's all we're trying to figure. Yeah. Out. No. No. That's why I came up. Yeah. yeah. And that's um in a. That would be in a locked. Dumpster. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So. The building, I don't know if it has to be moved or not, but we had already talked about where it was going to yeah, go. What thing is that legitimate on that, if, even with a, with a steel building that's bulletproof? Uh, because cause the way they designed if it, you're, it can you just talk into the mic just yeah, because so, Terry's walking out right now. Out She's going to come out and yell at us, and I'm, sorry, I'm just. But you're on television, and people can't hear you if you're not at the podium. Um, there were some questions about the, the footage. From the and so, I know when I spoke to the fire chief, he thought that the state of Maine wanted it to be 25 feet away from the other building, but being a all steel building, explosion proof, et cetera, et cetera. I said, "Geez, I says, is that is that part of the code?" He didn't know at the time. Now I've seen I've seen some of the email stuff back and forth, and he asked that it that it be 25 feet. Is that is that a is that a code thing for a building like this? Or? That's something that well, we can get an answer for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it changes what we're doing. If that. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it changes it for the better. That allows us to create a compound that we can fence in, so that whole back area that is locked in. That sounds like something so, you should do. Yeah. And then we can have the dumpster back there. The yep. cars can get pulled back there, so we can improvise or uh, update the parking plan. Yep. Um, you know, we can put a shield on the light so that it doesn't go up into the air. Uh, I don't think, I, don't, I think Dino doesn't want to change the light. I don't think he understands that we could just put a shield on top of it and no, block that it. light. It's just for me, we, we Wait, got you got In the microphone. <laughs> we, we've got something that works. I got we've it. Had, we've had no issues with security. We've had no issues with yep. theft. We've, we've been there 25 years. We've had no issues. And now it's like, hey, change what you're doing. And it's like, well, just yeah, it's it. only because just of this. I get it. I get it. Tear it all down. You I, can do whatever the hell you want. I was just hoping there was a magic wand that you could. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. This building being in the like Wild that. West, you don't have to do it. No, I oh, understand. All I have is a gavel and a panic button, no, no, and I neither understand. of those do that. Hey, Nicole. Yes. I found a quiet place. I'm so sorry, guys. How embarrassing. So that's okay. Um. So for your waste, we would require a dumpster with trash pickup like you were discussing, but we would also require it to be locked at all times. Um, it can never be unlocked overnight or during the day. It has to be locked at all times just to give you a heads up on that. Um, and the lighting issue, I mean, we're just, it's our, it's, it's an ordinance and you're going to have to follow it. So if you need yeah. more information on what you need to do, or you want me to come out, you know, sometime in the evening and take a look at it, I'd be happy to do that for you. But Unfortunately, you're going to have to follow it. 
Um, Jen, can you ask me what the status of the building permit is over there on the building that they're building? Um, so oh, which, which permit, the one that came in after the fact? The after the fact, yes. Yep, so that is ready for pickup on Monday. Those were all printed yesterday. Um, that's the status of that. So okay. they'll come in, they'll pay for it and they'll pick it up. And then um, we're gonna have to go do an inspection in the building. And I don't know the status of that yet until we okay. do it. Okay. So, but that, right. that has to be figured Whenever out before ready. they can go forward. Yep, Whenever you guys are ready, just give me a call. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so um, what is the status on the approved rain garden that you guys are doing for your LID? So we haven't constructed the rain garden yet because okay. we wanted to make sure that before we cover up the building or doing, we want to make sure that we step this thing yep. so that we don't miss anything. Okay. So You're not going to get a CO until that's no done. No problem. Okay. Yeah, that's no problem. All right, good. The rain garden will take us couple days all right um and then the septic system has it been relocated so i i, I thought that the septic permit got turned in with that i apologize it's uh -huh. done okay. it's relocated it's done. Okay. it was done by joe noel he okay. handed me all the paperwork okay cool um it's been upsized yeah so yeah they, i think it might not have i checked the file and yeah still problem yeah thank you all right, so I'm sorry, I, this is my first time. No, that's okay. It's my so turn. Okay. I'm learning as I'm I go. I'm just learning how to do you this too, too, so it's okay. <laughs> um, so I just want to go around the board and just let everybody ask their questions. Paul's got that look on his face, like he's got questions, and <laughs> I love that. Um, but I, <laughs> I'm gonna let Mike Larue go first. <laughs> um, the only thing I would say is I would talk to the OMP about the setback from for your building. It may be 25 feet. Um, that's a state regulation. Yeah, that would I be... think the 25 feet already works well for us to yeah. create that courtyard yeah. Yeah. so that we can lock everything up. So. Yeah. Okay. Then you're going to want to come back with your new plans. Yeah. So at your Updated, next meeting, yeah. like just ma have everything complete. Okay. Yep. That's it, Mike? Yep, that's it. Mrs. Oh, no, Ms. Hurley. <laughs> <laughs> Till August. <laughs> Till August. <laughs> um, no, I think I'm good. All right. Phil? I, I'm just. First time I've laid eyes on any of this was this evening. So I, my, just out of my curiosity, Me too. So you guys are you, you use, <laughs> no, it's a butane process that you use? This is a butane extraction process. Okay. I think that they also might utilize ethanol, but I'm not positive. Okay. Uh, Evan could speak more to that. So the, the butane, is that stored? I, I assume there's a large vessel on premises where that's stored? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there would be a pressure container somewhere. And, and what's the volume? That uh, you'd have Evan? to uh, that's an Evan code. So that's all called out on the, if you look at the floor plan, it is on, it should be the third page in that package. And by the way, I think it's quite possible that you all aren't looking at the most updated because um, some of the things mentioned sound like they were from old plans. Um, well, that's helpful. But in the most recent one, the third page, we show butane located not only in the lab workspace but also in use in extraction booth 20 um, and they're also labeled the volume so it's 60 pounds i see the internal and ones my, my concern was the external uh bulk storage for butane and then what are your setbacks is this above ground is it in ground and and is the fire chief on board with with your guys plan moving forward so as far as as far as this process is designed, I mean, this is the complete amount of butane that'll be necessary to run this processing operation. So there shouldn't need to be any outside storage. Um, and in terms of maximum allowable quantities, that's typically how we would analyze and lay out these areas. Okay. So all this is all constructed of a one hour rated sandwich insulated metal panel. So essentially what that does is it creates control areas that each separate control area is under the max limit, which for an unsprinkled building is 240 gallons of, of solvent um, in pounds. I don't have the number offhand, but our process hazard analysis explains how this is complying with the fire code. Okay. So if I'm understanding what you're saying, that the print that I'm looking at shows uh, four vessels. Those, those are the vessels that, that that's the only place that butane will be stored on the premises. 
Yeah, that's what's proposed. That's the way the process hazard analysis lays that out, you know, how that functions with all the equipment. There's no additional yeah, butane that will be stored or in use. Okay. Yeah. All right. Satisfied? I am. Yep. All right, Mr. Amatucci. Can I step in first? Yes, you really can. sorry, Paul. Um, I'm not sure, Evan, do you guys have a um, license through the state to for that process? We just went through this in Berwick and it was kind of a big deal, so. So typically the way we, so granted we've, we've done some work in Maine, usually the way that we get this equipment through and the process through is that each individual piece of equipment has an engineer peer review document, you know, that explains the compliance of all the parts on the machine itself, its functionality, and that's stamped by a PE. And then we ha what we have done as well is we have a fire protection engineer that writes a more complete report that outlines, you know, here are the, the pieces of equipment in use with their associated engineer peer reviews, explain the process, and then he stamps that, certifying that process as a compliant um, process. And then typically we deliver that to the city along with the building permit documents, fire department, building department reviews those items for compliance. Is a special um, part of your license that has to um, specify that you're able to do that through the OMP. So you might want to give them a call if you don't have that. Okay. Yeah. And it, it, just for context too, I'm in terms of my scope of work, I'm more on the, I'm on the facilities design side in terms of any state level permitting for cannabis use. That's, that's sort of outside of my, what I'm doing. So. Okay, Paul. Yeah, just just a, I, this is the first time I'm looking at this as well. So excuse me if everybody already knows these answers. Uh, but I'm looking at the uh, the application here. What is the existing building that was approved in February last year? Was that an extraction facility that was approved? No. Which was it? Oh, that was a grow and a retail facility. A grow and a retail facility. Okay, because this says existing uses cannabis extraction on the application. So is it is the existing use of that property extraction or is the new use? So we, we had it, we changed the right. use that's to the, cannabis. That's the new use that they're going for. So that is not, yeah, that's mislabeled. Okay. So I, I just wanted to clarify that so I know what yep. we're talking about. Yep. Um, so, so I just wanted to say that we, we understand that we need the OMP licenses, but okay. we've been dealing with the town first so that we can acquire that okay. and we'll be applying to the state. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty much there. Oh, oh, we've, I've been in contact a lot with OMP. They'll get their certificate of occupancy. They'll get their local license, planning board approval. They send an application to us and then we send it to OMP and then they turn around their license in like a week, they said. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, and the fire chief has signed off on. No, we're gonna uh, we're gonna not. discuss okay. we're gonna okay. discuss that later. Because I, I I think my biggest concern is that I don't know who had mentioned it, but there's no installed fire suppression system in the new building. That is Evan. I'm not sure. I believe the building is bomb fireproof, shatterproof, like okay. proof proof. My my concern, what you, that, and that's fine, but you know, from a first responder standpoint, you know, we got volunteer firefighters and such that would. I would, I would believe the state would require fire, fire suppression. It in does there. not. Okay. That's right. Evan. You could speak to that. Yeah. 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 So I hate to keep referring to this, but that's all outlined in the process hazard analysis as well. So for the quantity of butane proposed that it, it's, you're able to use per the code, able to use up to that amount without in an unsprinklered structure. So okay. we're under that MEQ. If, if they had sprinklers, it would double the amount of butane that could be present in the building but for the proposed amount it's it's permissible without sprinklers okay yeah, paul do you have any other questions i do uh the other thing which has always been uh, a key uh point for me has been uh odor mitigation what are we doing about odor mitigation there's there won't be much smell out of this it's in the that bottom. doesn't work. There won't be much smell. That oh, doesn't no, work. Like, I'm saying there. I know this extraction pretty well, and there's it, everything's frozen. So it, at that point, it's yeah. it's frozen, and then it goes into the waste. And once it's touched with the butane, all the essential oils are out of the material, 
So there is no smell. It smells like little hay poofs. Like they have a carbon filter, right, too, as well? Yeah. Yep. Storm has a filtration system as well. Yeah, that, that's already, we've, yeah, we've so, already passed that, though. Um, and, and I mean, he owns 40 acres in that spot, so there's not, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, is the there, the, in our, in our ordinances, is there, property is line. the, is it's the, property line. It is property yeah. line? Okay. For extraction, too? Well, just yeah, for, any just for smell. anything. Okay. Any yeah, but they they have a they have a carbon filter in here. Okay. All right. So and there is a carbon. But Mike filter. said that's relatively low odor yeah. to begin right. with, and yeah. they're they're okay. filtering they're filtering cultivation. It too. It, you need a lot of air filter. And have they had? Are you guys cultivating yet over there? No. Okay. No, no, okay. No, no. So we don't know because you have you don't you're not cultivating there, so we don't even know if we have any odor issues with that exactly. that um, property yet, but. So there is there is a uh, odor mitigation plan in place for this one. Yep. Anything else, Paul? Uh, I think for now that's it. Okay, Jerry. No, I think you've already touched on what I had it was uh, permits required. Okay. O OMP and possibly the DEP. I talked to James earlier. Okay. And I'm gonna check with DEP. We had some comments from the previous application. We're seeing if it will apply okay. for for here. Amber, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. Okay. So um, the only other thing I want to touch on before I send you back off into um, the wild, wild west to get your stuff together. He's joking. I know. <laughs> Listen, I'm just trying to be personal. No, no. <laughs> I'm just watching dollar signs. No. Um, so I just want to look at, so we, we can't vote. We're not going to vote on any of it because the application is not complete. Sure. Um, and we're not going to vote on waiver requests, but I do want to just um get the consensus of the board because i have some feelings about it so the the site plan scale i don't i think that's fine for waiving um i'm not comfortable with waiving building elevation topography and soils i think is fine with waiving um, and i'm not comfortable with waiving the copies of the letters from the department heads and does anybody have any feelings about that on the board speak up no, I, I agree I'm in, with you. I'm in agreement with the height, uh, just showing the not wavering on the height, just because if you do it once, like it, you're, you're setting a precedent. And I, I think you <coughs> have a full firm. Yep. I agree. Yep. Okay, so that's, I mean, we're, again, we're not voting on it tonight because we can't. No, no, that's okay. We yeah. wanted to see what basis we right. needed. So I to... think you have a good... James is going to have a really good list of what you need to tackle, but basically, you know, we need bigger plans, we need the updated plans, and if you need that 25-foot setback from the other building, then you've got to go back to the drawing board anyway. Completed application, updated parking plan, I want to see the lights on the whole plan, including the lights on the building. Um, I would go ahead and just start getting the letters from the department heads, because and, and, and the building elevation. We want to see what it's going to look like. Yeah. It's really just problem. letters to the department heads. Oh, letters to the department heads, yeah. It's so. really, it's, yeah, just a copy that just said yeah. you sent it to, yep. you know. And then I think the the fire chief is the, the one that you just want to be comfortable with the process. And yeah. yeah. We'll work with OMP and get a comment from yep. him. And then just all that written stuff that's on the sidebar on, like, separate pieces of paper where we, we can see it, including... The, you know the waste and the fire suppression and all that stuff just where it's easier I think this fire suppression was in this thing that I'm looking at on my phone which is useless um, so yeah it, so it I, seems like what, what you guys are doing is scalable and it's being done elsewhere am I, am I correct oh yeah something? oh yeah is there is there any could, could you guys provide an example of an existing business that, that we could just look at and say, because this is all new to me and I'm just trying to wrap my head around it and it, just so we can see. Or maybe, so what I think would be good is next time if Evan can talk to us about like, here's what we're doing, here's what, because we're not marijuana experts, we have no idea even though we deal with this every day. Um, we don't know, like Mike actually is, but we don't know what this means. I don't know what extraction means. So maybe the next time you come in with the completed application and all the stuff, you can just give us a nice little presentation about it. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. All right, all right. Awesome. Okay, well okay. then I think you guys are good. You have a good, um, you have a good, we have a good set of instructions. 
Go back to the wild, wild west, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. <laughs> it's just the west. <laughs> oh, it's just the west. <laughs> <laughs> Berwick, North Berwick. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys, guys have a good night. Thanks, All right, um, concluding new business, I'm going to open up the second public comment session. Do we have anybody in the waiting room? We don't. Waiting to yell at me? No. So I'm going to close the public comment session. Informational items? Um, let's it see. tore down a bunch of buildings. Yeah, so yeah, I think what we'll see over there is they're going to start picking through what's been demolished. You might see some minor site work, some landscaping, you know, because they got the trees that have grown through the fence. <laughs> the town forest. Um, they'll be back. Great Falls Construction will be back to planning board June, July ish. Um, they're working through the uh, DEP stuff. They want to submit. They got a, I think, a it's either June or July, they, they're aiming to have a full submittal. That's a six month waiting process mm -hmm. to get the site plan um, done. I think you, what we'll see is there'll be two planning board as well for conditional use on the L-shaped building, which that could potentially be where the first commercial tenants are from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we might not see, um, you know, major, major construction happening, but I think we'll see a steady stream. Jenny, do you have anything for us? I have a couple things actually from the code office and I'm mostly saying them because this is a TV program um, <laughs> building permits right now. So building permits and inspections usually have a 24 hour um, turnaround right now. Um, 72 um, I'm coming back and I am overloaded with permits right now and just catching up on inspections. I'm also covering for um, South Berwick while he's out and, um, so just to give you guys a heads up, you might wait a little bit longer, but I promise you guys can start building right away. Um, and another thing is um, the code enforcement, when you call the town hall, it directs you to a um, phone line at the town hall. But um, please, please, please remember that I do work remote, but I'm also on the road all day. Please use the cell phone because a lot of times I'm getting those messages. No kidding. 10 o'clock at night where I can't respond back to you um, because they come to me through email. And sometimes I'm checking my email that late. So we're, we're open 24 hours. We are, but I'm not going to respond to you at 10 o'clock at night. So just please make sure that you know that um, the cell phone number is 207-752-6103. Okay. That's it. Thanks, Jen. Thank you for participating so much. I know it was hard tonight and I had a lot of questions for you. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm so sorry about that. She's not usually like that. I don't know what was going on. All right. Jen, you're awesome. You are awesome. I was just going to say, appreciate don't be sorry, that. you're a rock star. <laughs> you are, you are deep, deeply appreciated. Oh, Paul, thanks. I appreciate Paul, that. <laughs> Paul, do you have any uh, informational items for us? I have nothing. All right. Mr. Graybill? I'm all set. No. Mrs. Fecto? I'm all set as well. All right. Phil Roy, anything you got for oh, us? Allison? Can I discuss what I talked to you guys about? Yeah, okay. Yeah, All right, course. so just so everybody that is watching <laughs> knows, um, we do have a new committee through our volunteer group in Vision Berwick. So if you want to know more about the vote that's going to be happening in June and you want to feel empowered about your vote and what it means, um, please reach out to Jeremy Casson and the Envision Berwick team. You can find their info on our website. Um, and get involved with that because it's something really important and we want to see you guys all out there voting. Good. I'm glad that you guys are doing that. It's really important. Mike LaRue, do you have anything for us? No. Oh, a second time? Fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a comprehensive planning in Vision Berwick. There's a ton of ways to get involved and it can be small or it could be a big project, whatever you want to sink your teeth into. But with uh, the excitement happening across the street, now's a great time to get involved. I have so many people asking me if there are planning board openings, and I'm like, no, I have we have people waiting to get on this board now. <laughs> Such a difference from a year ago. <laughs> okay, um, with that, I would like uh, a motion to adjourn somebody. If there's no further comments or questions, live from the esteemed Burgess conference room <laughs> in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I'd like to propose a motion to adjourn. I have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. <laughs> All right. Seconded by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye.